it was bright and sunny yesterday, but uh, yeah, it's a spring day, time of new life, new beginnings here, you know, with the grass is drawn and the mowers are running, and today we come to think about something uh, pretty important as we think about uh, Dohiye. Actually, it's Dohiyi, peace. And uh, in this spirit, we're going to talk about peace pilgrim. Our readings from today are going to be from the New Testament. And we'll start it with Yanni, Ayo Dolami, 10, 11 through 18. So if you want to get your uh, Cherokee New Testaments out, uh, we can do that. Aya akwada na ti awidis ji yatiya udanati awida yatiya ganai eladi da neho awi aji na je. Let me start that over. This is verse 12. Aji na se. Does e ni a we de gatia ni gay sana a le a we ja je ni ga ni gay sana waya ja e san e wa go wada de gan de go a we a le a de ti skio e ya waya no de gani e skio a le the D Galea Sia Awi. Verse 13. A J Nasida Ale Tiskahi Nagi Galis do Diska. A J Nase da Quo Gesan E. A Ya a Quo da Nati Awi de Jigia Tia Ale. Te ji gataha di qua ji liga. Ale di qua ji laga gangiga taha. Nasgia agaya ligi ja giga taha. Ale aya agaya ligi ji ji gataha. Ale gana iladi te ji neha awi. Ale Nunada Li Awi Dagi Kaka Nagi Pagla Pia Puniya Sli Yaniyaha Nagi Nasko Ase Dodagati Noli Ale Danada Gani Jina Gani Ale Sunada Klaigi Nadagana Listani Ale Sakwo Gesdi Awidi Gatiya Iladi Jianska Ganae Nazgi Talane Agigi Sodi Jizgi Nazgi Nudagalis Do Diha Agayan Legi Agige Yaha Utla Hilo Yadagigi Hila Aquans the Quos Kini Aquo Dana Te Dan Hila De Ta Seni Agiha Yele Quo Hila Da Hila De Gagi De Ge San He Ale Agiha Yele Quo Gagigi Sim Nsodi Ge San He Nazgi Hiya Nazdi Edoda Agine Je La And in the interest of time, our second reading, I'm just going to do in English. So first, I'm going to go back to our first reading here, which is uh, uh, John chapter 10, verses 11 through 18, which is the 
the verse we're going to kind of focus on today, the reading we'll focus on today. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not know the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches him and scatters him. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as God knows me and I know God. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have no other sheep, excuse me, start that verse over, that's verse 16. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, God loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from God. And our support verse for today is from Acts 4, 5 through 12. The next day their rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, If we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to you, all of you, and to all the people of Israel, that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, and has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. He saw lay down his life of his own accord as an act of love. In fact, it was a revolutionary act of love which he sought to bring upon this earth in contradiction and in challenge of the rules and regulations of the Roman Empire, the rules and regulations of his own people and the high priests who were of course the leaders were chosen by Rome and so were considered kind of puppet leaders. He challenged the culture in which he was born and raised and he was actually born and raised into a multicultural environment because he was raised Jewish but also uh, influenced by the Hellenic, Hellenistic culture and the Roman culture. They all kind of interacted with each other, plus the cultures of all the other indigenous peoples of that area that they were exposed to or maybe influenced by on a daily basis. And they had one thing in common, all those cultural influences. They were motivated by self-interest first, and not by love for others. Jesus knew that peace on earth could not be achieved until human beings came to a place of willingness to love others as much as they love themselves or their selves, depending on your, your uh, English heritage. 
And that's been a challenge. We started this revolution of love a long time ago, and I called it a revolution of love because uh, there was the name of a a uh, television show. It's a animated show on FNX, which is a Indian television, and one of the characters on there is a Native American Christian. Talked about this. What's the name of that show? You remember the name of that show? I was trying to remember, I think of it. I've never heard of it. It wasn't on last night, and I was going to write it down. And yes, huh? Yeah. Well, FNX is a is an Indian television, but wow. anyway, there's a there's a show on that, and it was a really powerful statement. Mm -hmm. they, they talk about all these things about why there is no peace among Native American Christians and main mainstream Christianity. There's, there's a conflict that exists. And the conflict is over the motivations that are different. The American Christians are motivated by love for the people. And apparently many mainstream Christians are motivated by something else today. Much like the Jewish and the Roman and the Palestinian peoples were motivated in first century Palestine. This is such a powerful position that there was a woman who uh, was Quaker, saw this, and decided to do something about it back in uh, the 70s and 80s. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard of her or not, but if you hadn't, well, you're going to learn about her right now. She's known as the Peace Pilgrim. Peace Pilgrim is a uh, European Christian woman who spent a life struggling, her entire life struggling, with the double standards and incongruities of the message of Jisa and the way that it was actually being practiced here in North America. Practiced in such a way that it was causing so much grief and suffering for so many people, not only in North America, but all over the world. Her response to this was to de devote herself to bringing attention to the disparity between the challenge, you know, the, the teachings of Jesus and the contemporary issues around the lack of peace among peoples here in North America and around the world. She firmly believed and was devoted to the reality that Jesus created a revolution of love calling for us to treat one another with love and to actually practice that in our lives. And when we fail to do that, then we are failing in our commitment honor Jesus' desire for us to be Christ-like. Here's a nice big picture of her right here. You can see that. I encourage you to look up on the internet about it now. As I said, she belonged to the Society of Friends, Quaker. And as an American Christian, I don't necessarily believe in everything that they believe in as far as theologically, their theological position. Uh, as a whole, but I do believe in this, the message that this woman brought. Now, I am a warrior. I was raised as a warrior. I have lived as a warrior. And that is an integral part of my life. And part of being a warrior, the most basic fundamental part of being a warrior, is the desire for people to lay down their weapons. To put an end to conflict. That's what being a warrior is about. Be the first one to put down the guns, put down whatever we need to put down in order to manifest peace in this world. And I support this mission and the followers that come from her. And I've met some of them a long time ago in New Mexico. And she did a lot, a lot of stuff in New Mexico. And this book was actually published in Santa Fe. So there's a, there's a lot to it. Uh, this woman 
devoted herself to walking back and forth across the United States, raising awareness as she went of the need for peace and of pointing out the different challenges that we face in our lives because of our unwillingness to love others. And it's a pretty powerful, uh, pretty powerful statement that she's got in here. She talks about transforming our society, the way of the pilgrim, and gives a lot of con uh, a lot of information about this. This book is available to anybody who wants it for free. All they ask is supportive donations. And uh, of course, uh, Global Peace Now is an organization that I have supported and been a part of and helped organize rallies for through our ministries uh, to bring the awareness of global peace and how it is needed. That's another branch of this. And what it says is that there are people here in North America who do have a willingness to recognize that the culture that they were raised in, the theology that they were raised in, is not consistent with the teachings of Esau. And Esau says in our reading today in John chapter 10, that coming to this place, bringing this revolution of love is so important to him that he had a willingness to lay down his life to bring it about. And he points out that pseudo-believers, pseudo-devotees, run away because of their lack of love for others. That's what he's talking about here when you look at this story where he says the hired hand runs away when the trouble comes because they really don't care. They say they do. They say they believe in God. They say they believe in the Holy Spirit. But when it comes time to actually stand their ground and practice it, and run away. They don't carry that conviction forward to do what is right. And this, of course, is most prevalent from a Native American Christian perspective in the magnitude and depth of institutional racism towards Native Americans that is so prevalent in North America still today and in this context, most especially among the Christian church, disciples of Christ in our nation. Jesus said that he had other flocks that they did not know about. Well, guess what? Here we are. Native Americans have known about Jesus for over 3,000 years. Jesus is immortal. As one elder said, you know, when, when Jesus came to North America, we learned from him. When Jesus went to Palestine, you killed him. And that disparity represents the difference in cultural values. We honor other people's voices. We recognize that everybody has their journey. We treat each other with love. The culture from which European Christianity came from was a culture of, and apparently is still a culture of, me first. And this is what Jesus was challenging. He saw that this was happening. He knew this was going to continue to happen. And he had to make a statement about it. And that statement is very powerful, very strong. And it's supported in Acts by the words of Peter, who challenged the elders at the time and said, hey, you drug us in here, you put us in chains, you drug us in here in front of you for healing somebody. What's up with that? I can't even begin to tell you how many times Indian religious leaders have been persecuted for healing people. 
I know from experience. And here it's still. 2,000 years ago, Peter and the other disciples were being subjected to the exact same treatment that Christians today are continuing to do. Are you one of them? Do you look upon Indian religious teachings in healing ways and think of it as pagan or as a gift from God to help improve the quality of life of other people? She saw himself said, you guys don't know about the other flocks that I have. That's a clear indication that Esau has been traveling around the world talking to others, which is so. Because God can do anything. Even God said that. And Esau said anything is possible for God. Well, the Peace Pilgrim believed that too. She believed in human beings' capacity to change. She truly believed, like she saw demonstrated, that human beings have the ability to let go of attitudes, beliefs, and practices that harm others, that exploit others, that exclude others, that degrade others, that impugn others, and to embrace the true spirit of God's love for us and for all human beings. Because of this, she had followers who continued to carry the message of peace here in North America and around the world. And so, she devoted herself to service to humanity, service to God and human beings. She walked back and forth across this country right up until the day she died. And unfortunately, that was in a car accident on her way to a peace rally where she was supposed to be speaking. That was long ago. But today, you have the opportunity to decide whether or not you want to be a peace pilgrim, a person who carries the message of peace in a very powerful and courageous way, a person who says it's not okay to be racist, it's not okay to be abusive, it's not okay to be exploited at an individual level and at an institutional level. You have an opportunity to do that today. What's it going to take to create peace? Well, that's a question that many people have been asking for a long time. You know, there have been conferences. I've been to some. There are the United Nations initiatives. Uh, there's been an enormous amount of intervention. But the number one challenge that we have in creating peace is convincing human beings to treat each other with love. That's the challenge that Esau knew was going to be faced. That's the challenge Esau spoke to and that's the, the challenge that Jesus uh, clarified and also compel, compels us to be Christ-like in facing that challenge. To be so convicted that we move from being the hired hand who will run away. Even as the disciples ran away when Jesus was arrested. To being Christ-like and standing by Jesus' side in confronting all aspects of theology, of culture, of uh, polity, that
that prevent the manifestation of peace in our churches, in our homes, in our communities, in our nation, and in our world. If you want to know more about it, get on the web page here, get on the, uh, let's see what they call this, Friends of Peace Pilgrim. Do a little look up, get a copy of this book, I, I think it's still available, and, uh, and learn some more about this. This is a wonderful opportunity for you to really make a difference. Not only in your life, but the lives of many, many people, especially the young people. Jesus cared so much for us that he made the choice to lay down his life as an act of love. Do you have the conviction of spirit to be Christ's life. And to be equally as passionate for peace as Jesus was and still is. Walk in beauty. Bye.